you can really load up your wallet really quickly if you need to buy stuff. is not evolving. So I've got my three primary team members evolved here. And there's one more Pokemon I'm gonna catch to put on. Um, I have to backtrack for that one. And on evolving to Star Raptor, you get to learn a good move. And you've already just seen it in action. Get rid of quick attack. Because yeah, it's pretty fast anyway. Uh, yeah, that's a really good move because now it, at least it gives it a way to counter rock type. So Star Raptor just goes from good, now it's even better. Yeah, so I think it's like 50 or 100 steps or something um, that you can re you can try to challenge Pokemon again. And you can rematch to your heart's content. And then with that fourth member of my team, I'm gonna probably have to do that because, you know, it's gonna, otherwise it's gonna be way behind on levels. Good yield for that Hapini. I mean, look at that. My goodness, it almost leveled up right there. Okay, well, why don't we take a look inside here? And we're gonna find a bunch of people here. That talks about the Psyduck outside. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do anything with them for a little bit of time. Oh, this person wants to have a Pokemon battle. for the easy victory. I don't know if you can use your Via Seeker inside of a place, but you know, most of the trainers are outside, so it's really not a big deal. Uh, this person sells Runa. Now, what's nice about this, you can buy them in a dozen. Uh, instead of just one at a time, you buy 12. 
And this is actually a very useful healing item. Much better than... It's actually the same price as it. No, it's cheaper than a Super Potion, actually. A Super Potion is 700. And, uh... It only recovers 50 hit points. And moving that one costs 500 and it's sort of a 100 hit points, which is basically what my Pokemon are at right now, so... And it's, uh, very convenient. I really like, you know, Luma Milks here. Well, until you get to, like, the Hyper Potions, but that's, like, way later in the game, so... And this guy has a, has a Munchlax. Um, very difficult to find. They are in, uh, those honey trees. And apparently there's, like, a algorithm that determines which trees have them, depending on your ID numbers. Um, I haven't taken a look at mines yet. Even then, it's only a 1% chance of finding it. So, <laughs> not exactly easy to find. What have you done to my Pokemon? Oh, so he did catch it from a honey tree. <laughs> Just made it faint in like five seconds. This guy's gonna grieve for a battle as well. This guy's got a hair across. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, he's actually a pretty good Pokemon. Uh, again, you can find this in honey trees as well. Uh, it's a little more common. And that gives I think, a pretty good array of moves. I haven't actually tried it out yet. I'm like a cigarette. You know, it's a bug fighting type, so you know, a flying type is its worst nightmare. Get a lot of experience though. And we'll take all the experience we can get here. Okay, so everyone is uh, at least evolved up. So, um, I think it's like 80 steps, or maybe 100 steps. I think it does take a good number of steps here to charge your BS Seeker. Oh, uh, on another note here, this vertical line right here, if you go up and down this long vertical line, this is probably the best place to hatch Pokemon eggs. Because it's such a long line, as I think, uh, going back and forth is probably, like, 250 steps or something. You can find Scyther here, that's kind of interesting. A lot of experience. Well, yeah, that that vertical line gets you like 250 steps, so good way to hatch Pokemon eggs, especially if you have um, a Pokemon with a particular ability that basically have the time you to hatch Pokemon eggs. Although that's, I think, after Elite Four, so. So you really won't be able to make much use of it. Seeker and ah, 
can't do this thing, that's static. Darn it. Kind of annoying there. 